Hey YouTube, welcome back to Hey It's A Good Life. My name is Natalie and today I'm so glad you're here because I'm going to tell you my absolute favorite story to tell right now. So about six months ago, I started casting a greater vision for this garden and for this homestead. Now, a lot of you guys know that we're renters until we find our forever home. And that makes things just a little trickier for us in terms of doing things in a rent friendly way. So when I started seeing a picture of a greenhouse in my mind, I was like, but God, like, why am I going to build a permanent structure outside when we're going to leave at some point? And I just kept seeing this picture of a greenhouse over and over and over again. Well, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe I should just, maybe I should just settling. <laughs> um, maybe I should just kind of get like one of those wire greenhouses. And I just couldn't find a style that I liked. And I knew that eventually it was going to wear and tear with time. And I just felt like that wasn't really in line with our values. Like we're very minimalistic. If we buy something, we want it to last the test of time. And so I just, I couldn't. I couldn't see myself doing that. And so eventually I said, okay, no. And I just kind of like laid it down. I said, okay, God, like you're gonna have to show me, you're gonna have to make this happen because I, I'm i not seeing a way through. And if this is something that you wanna do, like I'm open to it, but you're gonna have to show me how. <laughs> oh man, and did he show me how? Now let me just also preface that at the same time I was dreaming up this greenhouse, I was also seeing like this vision of expanding the garden. I started seeing like, you know, walls of green and using grow bags and even building more garden beds, which we did. And you can check that out right here. Um, and we built like these kind of rent friendly garden beds to hold containers and keep them up off the ground so that they don't stain the cement because we're renters. So it's this whole thing, right? So we build more garden beds to support some container gardening um, endeavors. But I quickly realized that the grow bags that I had purchased, which I didn't actually intend for that space, were too short. And so what I realized I needed was something more like five gallon nursery pots. And so I thought, okay, like maybe I could go buy like one of the local nurseries and, and see if they're giving away any of these pots, or maybe I could buy them at a discount or something, but I really can't justify like getting new five gallon nursery pots. So I'm like, all right, we tuck that away. Now you guys also know, you guys know like, Hey, it's a good life and doTERRA are ways that I make money here on the homestead. And for both of those businesses, I really wanted a way to cast a vision for where we're going this year. Even if there's only, you know, a certain amount of months left at this point, like I still wanted to be able to cast a vision for that. And so a couple months ago, I start looking at whiteboards and I'm like, God, I really want like a classroom size whiteboard. It'd be so cool if I could find it on Facebook marketplace or something like that for cheap. No luck, nothing. And a brand new one was just like out of our price range. It's just like not within the budget right now. And I just thought, I can't justify buying this right now. But one day, one day I'll have a, a whiteboard and it's going to be good. And so I'll tuck that away. And around that time, I, I also decided it would be really nice to have a potting bench. And I kept getting this picture of using like old pallet wood or like recycled wood or something. And I thought, yeah, that would be really cool to have like this old kind of old looking like potting bench, something kind of rustic looking. I really like that look. So yeah, let's, let's see if we can make that happen. All right. We took that away. <sighs> Here comes the day before mother's day. Now I'm back on this idea of the greenhouse. Cause again, like I said, I just can't shake this idea. I'm on the phone with my mom and I tell her, I just keep seeing this picture of a greenhouse. I want one so badly, but I don't know how we're going to make it happen. It would be so expensive if we did it all on our own. And I also just really don't like cutting wood. I would hate to buy all the wood and then like make a mistake with the cuts. So let's, let's sketch something out that wouldn't require a lot of cutting. And so I sketched out an eight foot by four foot design, which would basically limit the amount of cuts that I need to make, making it a lot easier for me to basically not mess up. And so I sketch it out and I draw it into position in our garden. And I was like, this is too big. I FaceTime my mom, we got the measuring tape out. We're kind of looking at it together and we're like, no, this is too big. And I was kind of like, what about six feet? She's like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And I was like, yeah, I feel like six feet's a good number. Maybe like six feet by three feet. She's like, yeah, that would be perfect. So I'm like, okay, okay. All right, we'll do that. So I sketch it out. I'm like, yeah, I could totally see that. Now here's where things get cool is I realized that I could totally put a greenhouse on wheels. Like why not? I could put a greenhouse on wheels and then we can wheel it into place for now and then wheel it out when we go. So I kind of redesigned this thing and I'm like, all right, a greenhouse on wheels, six feet by three feet. Perfect. 
So fast forward to the next day, Mother's Day, we go up north, we see our family, we have a physically distant Mother's Day and it was great to see all of them. And on the way home, um, I was driving, Tommy had fallen asleep and I see building supplies on our road, like as we're getting to our house. And some of you guys I know rubberneck gardens. Well, I rubberneck free supplies on the side of the road. So I look and I'm like, no way. Like that looks like so much awesome free stuff. I wonder if they're in the middle of a project. Okay, I'll drop Tommy off and then I'll go back and check. So I drop Tommy off, I go back and check and I ask the guy, I knock on his door, I'm like, hey, like I see that you have stuff on the side of the road. Like, are you using that? Are you in the middle of a project? Like could I have some? Like, what's the deal? And he's like, oh no, like go for it. You know, quarantine times, we just finished a bi big project, got to stay busy. And I was like, okay, awesome. So I go to the side of his house and I start rummaging through all this stuff. And I'm like, no way, no way. There were all of these two by fours. And I was like, this could be the material for my greenhouse. So I'm like, okay, I don't know if this is all of what I'll need, but yeah, let's, let's put it in the car. So I start putting it in the car and I kind of keep going through stuff and I find five gallon growing pots, like old nursery pots. Like he had cl clearly just done some landscaping or something and had left these pots on the side of the road. And I was like, no way in the exact quantity that I needed. And I was like, this is wild. I was like, okay, God, I see you like, all right, cool. Thank you so much for hooking it up. So I put those in my car too. And let's see what else did I get there? Oh yeah. And then I got a pallet. So I'm going through and some of these pallets were like, they were, they were tough pallets. Like they would require a lot of work, but then there was this one that was in really good condition and it had this kind of like rustic look to it. And I was like, no way. I think I just found the wood for my potting bench. So I open up my trunk, I get out the Mexican blanket, I throw it on the top of my Corolla. Right now we're working with the Corolla, but one day I'm hoping that God gives me a really awesome farm truck. Um, so I get out the Mexican blanket, I put it on top, throw the pallet on top, and I'm literally driving down the street one block to my house with the, my hand on the pallet like this, just like, okay, <laughs> we're gonna make it home, right? Like this thing's not gonna fly off my car. And what else do you think I see on the side of the road but a giant classroom-sized whiteboard? I was just like, this is, this, this cannot be happening right now. So of course I got out of the car and I put that in the car as well. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I get home and I start unloading everything and I kind of set aside the whiteboard and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so, it's in such good condition. It's amazing. Like I can't wait to clean that up and see what it looks like. I get out the pallet, put that aside. I get out all the, ga uh, the five gallon buckets. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Kind of set those aside. And I'm taking out the wood, looking at it going, wow, it's already like cut to such specific measurements. Like let's just line it all up by size. So I line it up from like biggest to smallest. I'm looking at it and I'm going, no, no. Like, are you serious right now? Like, could this be? No. And I get out my measuring tape and I measure the wood and I kid you not, it is six feet by three feet. The exact measurements that I had done the day before for the greenhouse build in my little sketchbook. I was like, okay, all right. Like God, you care, you care about the desires of my heart. Now I have to tell you that this month in particular has been a really interesting month for me and my faith. And in a time where I think we're tempted to look at so much evil and so much fear in the world, I really see that God is, he's on the move and he's looking for people who are willing to move with him. And part of how God started moving me and stirring me into action was that a lot of you guys know I had this really serious back injury and this month really started off with God showing me that we had business to do about that. Now, I'm happy to say I'm doing a lot better, but the thing that happens when we go through trials and pain and suffering is that it shapes who we are and it also shapes how we see God. A lot of you guys know I'm a professional counselor and in my studies I learned two really interesting terms. Um, God image and image of God. And these are two terms that refer to basically how we view God and how we experience God. And good or bad, our experiences shape that. Um, our experiences with our caregivers shape that. Our experiences with our parents, grandparents, aunties, like the people who looked after us as children greatly impact that God image and the image of God. And I sat down at my kitchen table earlier this month and I just thought, God, in light of everything I've gone through with this back injury, like Am I bitter towards you? Do we have some business to talk about? Right away, he was like, yes. <laughs> he was like, I was like, but God, I, I, 
I know that you're good. Like, I know that I can trust you. He's like, yeah, you know that I'm good and you know you can trust me, but you don't know that I'm good and you don't know that you can trust me. So I prayed a really simple prayer. I said, okay, God, show me your goodness. Show me your goodness. I, I clearly don't believe it on some level. You're calling me out. I thought that I knew that you were good. You're saying that I don't fully know your goodness yet. So I want to know it, God, like show me, like take me to the deeper level of knowing you. Like I want to know your goodness. And so that was May 5th and each day he kept showing up and doing something wonderful. And then Mother's Day was really just like the mother load of everything. And that's when I found all these new materials for our homestead. And I just felt so validated, like, yes, I'm on the right course. God cares about what I'm up to here and he wants to be a part of it. So I hope you think that story is as cool as I think it is. And I'm very curious what this story means to you. For me, this is one of those stories that I don't feel like I can, I can keep it to myself. I feel like this obligation to share this with you guys. And there was no way I was gonna be able to post the video of building the greenhouse without first telling you the story behind the greenhouse because it's just one of those things that I'm like, are you serious? Like it's, it's more extravagant than anything I could have made up on my own. And my takeaways from this experience are a couple things. God really cares. He really, really cares about the desires of our hearts. And he also really, really cares about tearing down these old altars that we've built to pass pain and to pass hurt. And he's not interested in being put in any of those molds based on past pain and hurt. He wants to be the person that swoops in and loves on us and shows us that he's trustworthy and good. And he's definitely done that for me in my life this month. And I believe that he wants to do that for every single one watching this video. Now, zooming out a bit, what do I think God is saying on like a bigger scale? I really believe that God is on the hunt right now for people who are willing to cast vision and are willing to dream big dreams, big extravagant dreams, because he wants to do amazing things on the earth. And <laughs> this is just the story of stuff on the side of the wood. Like I believe that God is ushering me into something so much greater with him. Like this is just the tip of the iceberg. And if we would just learn to trust and believe that he is good again, I believe that he'll move mountains in our lives. And so zooming out on the bigger picture, I believe that God's on a real healing mission right now. He's wooing people back to him. And he's also seeking out the dreamers. He's seeking out the people who are willing to cast vision and dream big extravagant dreams, especially when it comes to anything in the world of redemption and redeeming the earth and redeeming its people. I really believe that God is changing and shifting our food system. What's going on in the world right now has definitely woken us up to how broken it is and how much it needs to change. And I believe that he's looking for people who are willing to be a part of that change. And he wants to show that abundance on the earth is possible. And he's looking for people who are willing to bring that forth. So those are just a few of my thoughts. I think this story is a lot bigger than just a couple bullet points. I'd love to know what this story means to you. If anything, um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you wanna shoot me a message on Instagram, that works too. We also now have a mailing address. So if you wanna write me some snail mail, you can grab the address in the show notes down below as well. That is all I have for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this story as much as I love telling it. And I'll see you guys next week and I'll show you guys how I built our mobile DIY. God would provided greenhouse. Bye.